Hello, uh, you're very welcome to the Clinical Skills Centre here in the School of Veterinary Medicine in University College Dublin. My name is Mark McCurry, I'm the Clinical Skills Manager and Tutor. And then I'm just going to talk you through how we use the room. So usually then uh, the resources that are here will be used by staff. So they'll use it to do practical classes where you'll come in and learn skills. And then in order to build skills, we need to repeatedly do those skills and practice, practice, practice. So then you're able to book into the room and then use the materials in your own time. And then I'm here to help you and give you feedback on those so that you continue to improve over and over. So it's kind of like learning an instrument. So what you want to do is keep doing more and more so that you get better and better as you go. And then feedback's really important and that's what I'm here for. Okay, so I'll show you, uh, usually what we'll do is in first year, you'll come in for an orientation day where we'll have some of the students from final year. You'll come in, we'll have all these skills set up. They'll show you how to use them and you can practice and kind of use the skills yourself. And then I'll talk you through how you can book into the room. That's usually just emailing me. You tell me what day, time and skill you'd like to do and we'll book it in and away we go. I'll show you around the room and you can see. So we have, I suppose in veterinary, we have all these different species that we have to learn. So we have a full-size horse that we can use. So we'll use this for jugular blood sampling, for catheter placement. We can do intramuscular injections here. We can do it for kind of wound management, placing bandages. We also have on the table here, we have our little catheter tray. This is to represent uh, giving an intramuscular injection into a cow as if we're standing up on a crush, so we're able to do that. Um, we have all our surgical instruments here on this board, so we're able to kind of learn how to use them and become familiar with them. And these are all just things that students kind of give us feedback on and then we're able to improve and continually develop and improve the facilities within the room. So there's then multiple species. So we have our little uh, sheep here, we have our calf and then our full size cow as well. So the cow is used and the horse as well. So a lot of these things, especially in first year, it starts really basic. It's just how do I be safe around these animals? How can I look out for their welfare, my own, the team's safety? So then that's what we're kind of focusing on. And then as we go through the years, we start to add in clinical skills like injections and blood sampling and catheter placement, etc. We also have a tail vein over there uh, so that you're able to sample from uh, the tail. Uh, so again, it's just being able to hold something, get used to the dexterity that's needed to do that, and then build on that skill as you go. <clears throat> we also make a lot of the things in-house here as well. So we'll make our own skin pads here. So we use this for suturing. So this is like an incision that we would have post-surgery. And then you're just using the tools here, the surgical instruments to close up that using different suture patterns. We use them for practicing wound lavage. So if we're using fluids just to flush out a wound. We use these for practicing draping and placing uh, towel clamps uh, when we're doing that in the procedure. And then simple things like doing skin prep. Again, it's just nice to have something that feels and looks like skin and end up we're actually able to prep that there. Then we have, what else? We have our surgical table here. And then we'll also try and, I suppose, simulate a real surgery. And I suppose the idea of simulation is that you're able to perform these skills without feeling intimidated or scared, uh, and then actually without being stressed about doing it. So what you want is that you're able to do these on inanimate objects, but that are kind of replicating how that will feel. And then that builds up your muscle memory, and then you're able to kind of, you know the steps in your head before you go out and perform it on a, on a live animal. So we have these models here where we have done our surgical kind of prep. We have our drapes in place like we were talking about over there. And then we have these models. This replicates um, a spay in a dog, so in a female dog. So this is what's inside it, just to represent things like ligaments and ovaries. And again, all it is is just about practicing making that incision, tying that off, getting the steps in order before we actually do this in reality. This is a castration one for a dog. So again, like this is mimicking our scrotum and testicles and we're able to make incisions. And the, the students are able to go through the steps and tie off these blood vessels. They're able to check and see that they've done that properly. And again, then come back and practice again and again and again. These simple little things here again will represent um, a vein that would be in the limb of an animal. So we're able to place IV catheters or take blood samples from them. And all it is is really finding out for you what works for you holding that catheter. How are you going to do that? And then that's just about giving you the feedback so that you're able to find this is what works for me or someone else might find it works differently for them as well. 
And that's what it's about. And I'll give you feedback and then you're able to go, okay, I get it, and give you tips and things that kind of help uh, as you're doing it. We're very lucky in that we get donated uh, equipment that's uh, no longer of use in the hospital. So we have two x-ray machines that have been decommissioned. So we can use those to practice. Uh, for this one here, we'll use on the horse for taking kind of limb x-rays. And then for this one here, it's a bit more stationary, so we'll use it for a small animal. And then this model here is quite simple, but it actually has all our uh, joints in place. So we're able to flex everything, we're able to do proper positioning, and this is designed for taking x-rays properly. So it has a little rib cage, and we're able to kind of properly do that uh, step by step. These guys here we have, this is our dog that just we use for, uh, sorry, for clinical exam. So we'll do our clinical exam here. We also use it, we've basically put a skeletal frame in here and we're able to take, we're able to do uh, intramuscular injections here or here. Uh, we have a little pulse inside here that we're able to simulate as well so that you get used to doing a clinical exam and feeling that pulse. This guy here we've uh, made for feeding tube placement. So we've put in a little rib cage here so you're able to feel the ribs along there. And then he has a little silicone nose that you're able to actually place the little feeding tube down into. And it has a nice, quite a nice uh, realistic feel. And that's all it is, just kind of going, what are the steps? I need to measure the distance, I need to feel for that, make note of where the tube will be when I place that, and then actually physically place it. We were talking about all the different species we have to learn uh, about. So we have little cats, we've managed to put in uh, we have the little kittens there, we have our guinea pigs, and then we have our rabbits. And again, all we're trying to do is we've kind of put in silicone versions of what uh, sexing would look like. We've put a little frame in there as well, so we're able to do kind of intramuscular injections and just basically being able to kind of work on handling techniques so that we're able to improve our safety around them as well. These guys are used for bandaging, so this poor dog has had a little ear surgery, so we're able to do a head bandage safely around uh, here. These are for our limbs, so we're able to do kind of paw bandages around them and further up as well. It's all about just being able to use these materials, feel safe, come in, use the room. So as I say, like we'll use it for practical classes. Outside of practice time then, so outside of those classes, you're able to email me, you book in, and then just practice as much as you can, get as much feedback from me as you can, so you just continue to improve. And I suppose it's really important to remember, we were all starting out at one point, and then it was, it was people like me that, that, that helped me kind of get better at what I was doing as well. And that's what it's here for. It's your room, you use it. Otherwise, it's just me with lots of teddy bears. <laughs> so uh, that's how we use it. We'll also have sessions that we run outside of class time. So we have sessions in the evening where we actually encourage students to come in and run what we call peer assisted learning sessions. So it's called VetPal, and that is where we'll have students who will teach students. So we have students in later years teaching students in younger years. So basically someone will come in and say, I want to learn about anesthesia. So then someone in the group will decide, actually I'm able to teach that. So then we'll have students teaching students. That works really well. It's really good for the people who are teaching because they're learning more. That's a really good study and revision tool for them. And then it's just nice students who are learning they feel like they can ask those kind of, what they would think is a silly question, but there are no silly questions. We need to ask and get these answers. So hopefully it's a friendly and welcoming environment. That's what we're trying to create here. As I say, it's the student space, and it's really for you guys to come in and use. And you know, that's what we're here for. And then we always want to improve our models, so then that's where you guys come in and that you'll say, you know, have you got something that I could practice this on, and we'll try and make it or find it or build it, or you can help us build it as well. So then we just, uh, as we go through the room, we just have uh, for birthing puppies, just to look after umbilicals. And again, just kind of going through that surgery and then as puppies are delivered, can we, can we kind of assist with that afterwards? We have anesthesia over here, which is obviously a big part of what we're doing. So we're learning about the different machines and the different circuits that we have to use. And then being able to basically uh, induce and intubate patients so that we're able to give them anesthesia. So again, these models have an airway in them, so we're able to actually pass this tube down into the airway. So then we're able to kind of go through the steps and mimic that, so that we're able to pass that tube um, using all the equipment that we would use. So it's about assembling that equipment. As we go through later years, we'll start to add in things like a case study. So we'll start to put reality to it and 
all of those individual skills that we've done in the early years will start to put together into a case and then kind of go, look, these are all the small skills that are being put together now into this comprehensive thing, working as a team and getting used to all those things because that's it's such a big part of what we're doing when we're qualified. So working together, communicating clearly so we get the best patient outcome. When you're using the room on your own, uh, so if you're practicing away, it's really nice to be able to just kind of reflect back and be able to kind of use the learning resources that are available from the skill center. So we've developed a lot of our kind of learning resources here. So we have on our virtual learning environment, we have a clinical skill center learning resources. So when you're a student here, you've access to this. And then basically when we click into my learning, all of the resources are there listed. So we have all the different kind of sections of veterinary uh, that we're studying. So then if we click into anesthesia, then we've all these videos here of how to place an endotracheal tube, an IV catheter, setting up fluids, etc. Then when we click into that, there's usually a video or like a PDF or a Word document outlining the steps or some important information on that. So it just means then when you're working on your own or if I'm not available or you're, or you're waiting on me to help you, it just means that you can work away yourself, kind of review that in advance of coming in and then while you're here to help you kind of practice the skill. Usually then there's little QR codes scattered around the room as well so that you're able to just get quick access to those videos because it's really important just to be able to kind of refresh and kind of go, am I doing that right? And then it just means you can access that. But I'm always here anyway, hopefully as well. So I'll be able to help you. So hopefully we're going to see you here in person. And as I say, you're always welcome. The door is always open and uh, look forward to seeing you.